Hi guys, it's Jamie Geller. I am here at Efrat in the heart of your Shalim. I know that sounds confusing, um, but the organization is called Efrat. It looks like I'm in a baby layette, like in a registry, and that's exactly where I am, but this is a very unique, special registry. Now it's hard for me because when I come on camera, I smile and you know how much I love you and I have so much like excitement to share something with you and to connect with you again. But I really was just crying for the last hour. This has been the most intense hour of my week so far. What day is it? Is it Monday? It's Tuesday. Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Okay, I can't even see what, wait to see what the rest of the week has in store for me. It's been incredibly emotional. I spent the last hour getting to know this organization that is nothing like what I thought it was. I came here with one notion and one concept of what Efrat does, and I left feeling like this is something that we need to be part of. You know that my entire goal and mission in life is to use our relationship, this community, on this platform to help the Jewish people and to help Israel and to help make the world a better place period. And it's my honor, it's a karasato. I have tremendous appreciation to Hashem, to God, and for the privilege that I have to do that and for us to do this together. I actually have some big news coming up um, that we did together that you don't even realize, guys. So stay tuned for that that's coming in the next few weeks. Um, but this is what we do here. And today we are at a frat. It's an organization whose mission is to make sure that every woman who wants to have a child, I'm being very specific with my language, who wants to have a child can. Everything is offered to help support this woman emotionally with medical assistance and with starting off her baby's life. Efrat has saved over 83,000 babies since it was started here in Israel by a Holocaust survivor. 83,000 babies, 3,500 babies a year. Now, let me just explain what the organization does. Uh, it helps to assist women, uh, counseling them. As I said, I met the most amazing social worker, Ruti. You guys are gonna meet her and you're gonna love her and you're gonna wanna volunteer. You can see her heart is open and therefore your heart opens when you speak to her. And I think that the counseling for women who feel alone or lonely or feel her making a decision about having a baby because of socioeconomic pressure, financial crisis, living below the poverty line. There's so many reasons why Ruti could write a book, by the way, on the reasons behind. I know maybe she'll, she and Nir, you'll meet Rabbi Nir. Are you a rabbi? No, I feel like he is a rabbi. But okay, you're going to meet Nir soon and we're going to talk. We're going to give you some specific stories about how Efrat helps. But really the counseling and being the emotional support is tremendous. Now you're going to meet Ruti and you're going to be like, great, this is amazing. How does this one person help 3,500 women? Do you want to hear the most incredible thing? Most of the staff here is volunteers. We have volunteers all over the country, and most of the volunteers are women who have frat has helped themselves. Now, the incredible statistic, and I know these are just numbers, but I want you to like really internalize what this means. 83,000 babies have been saved by Efrat, and all of them, 100% of them, over 83,000 are raised by their birth mothers. These are mothers that wanted to have these babies. We're not talking about politics here. We're not talking about pro-life, pro-choice at all, at all. This is not the place for that. This is women who want to have babies. How do we create a world in which they can? So the counseling is one. The other thing is this incredible starter kit. It's like when you and I had babies and we registered, we got married, we registered, and we bought everything. We People gave us gifts at our baby shower, and guess what? We bought the rest of it ourselves. So these are women who do not have that option and are literally not having a baby because they can't think about affording a crib, a crib. So new here, cribs, strollers, cloth diapers, layette bottles, formula, um, diapers, wipes, beds, uh, crib sheets, uh, bed sets. I'm looking at it, what else is here? Pacifiers, bibs, all of the basics that you need. A baby bath, a baby bathtub. You can see one right here. All of this is delivered right after birth to make sure that the woman has and the family has what they need to set up. My mother asked me a really interesting question. She said, are all of these single mothers? They're not. 50% are not single mothers, and the other 50%, whether they were single or are divorced they're, or in separation, uh, separated, there's many, many different stories to the women here that we're helping. So we're talking about the starter kit that we have here, right, in the bathtub there. But it doesn't stop there. Now, before we get to the next step, I want to tell you that from the hospital, these women, most of them, before they go home, their first stop is to bring the baby to Efrat 
and they really feel like this is a frat's child also. When you donate, it is your child as well. We are saving the child together. So social work, we spoke about counseling throughout, all done by volunteers. For two years, every single month, there's a monthly package for baby and for mommy that comes. I wanna show you these packages, by the way. The packages could have just said a frat, there could have just been a logo, but this starter kit, look at this. It's such a happy package to receive. I just felt like it's festive, it's celebratory, it's full of simcha and happiness, and that is what you wanna feel after having a baby. And in addition, look at these monthly packages. You can come as a volunteer, here to pack if you'd like it's an incredible opportunity and here are monthly food packages for baby and mother all the essentials that you need plus even food for the family and the volunteers who pack I don't know if you can see behind me there's a space that they can write a note to the mothers that are receiving the packages they had happy faces um, children are happiness uh, you should have a cute baby. It's like the cutest things. Teenagers, volunteers, children. There's just a smiley face you could see from a kid who's not able to write yet, who gets to send special messages. Now, come and look here. Diapers, diapers galore. I remember even feeling, both my husband and I worked when we got married, and I remember us feeling just like, oh my gosh, diapers are so expensive. Diapers come. I mean, <laughs> look at this. Like I've never been in an inventory like this. And this is all donated. The incredible thing is the price it costs to save a child. And it's unbelievable how do we put a, a cost on a life. But guess what? I don't know. I want you to guess. I want you to write here in the comments and tell me what you think it takes to save a child's life. What does it take? I'm patient. Are you ready for this? $1,500. $1,500, that's it, $1,500, boxes and boxes and boxes for two years, every single month of sustenance and, and, and uh, support, the products you need, the tools you need, the food you need, the things you need. You know what it's like when you have a baby and you leave with that baby bag? To give them a baby bag and to make sure that that baby bag is full, $1,500. Now I know, I've spoken so much. You are ready to meet Nir and Ruti, so let's go. Guys, I promised you, Ruti, the biggest heart in Yerushalayim, Ruti. Why, thank you so much, well, Jamie. I'm so excited and moved by your, by seeing the reflection of Efrat in your eyes. It's yeah. really, really amazing. I'm here for 22 years. Yeah. And I've been, I've spoken with thousands and thousands and thousands of women that we've helped and the thanks and the appreciation for years after it are so moving. Oh. We come into a junction in a woman's life yeah. that's so stormy and difficult, and we come in with sensitivity and with acceptance and with non-judgmental, and we come with, with, with important things that she needs. Right. And the and the the main thing that I always hear is that once a frat was in the picture, I wasn't alone anymore. We were talking about that, that feeling of being alone and alienated. As you said, I love the language you use. It's such a stormy time. Under the best of circumstances, the hormones are raging. It's crazy emotional. You're dealing with the other pressures of life as it is. Absolutely. And it's like, it's an intense time no matter what, under the best of circumstances. Absolutely. And now you're talking about making sure that women who feel alone and feel despair and are ready to give up in all aspects of life, not just it's like a lifeline. It's absolutely a lifeline. That's what it is. And that's how the women feel, is that somebody threw them a line to help them out of the stormy sea that yes. they're in and, and, and help them approach their pregnancy with, with happiness, joy. with joy, and with yeah. expectancy, and with, right. with, with pleasure, and, and, and hope for a good future. It's yeah. really important. It's, it's so, it's such a... It's literally the time where the future hangs in the balance. Absolutely. And it's the, it's the future of the unborn child, but it's also the future of the mother and how she's going to approach her life and her worldview and her viewpoint moving forward you know, and what yeah. she feels about herself. Every woman that comes to us, I do an intake. And yeah. I, one of my questions is, did you ever have an abortion? Yeah. And when she says yes, then I'll ask her, and how was it for you? How yes. was the experience for you? And I've spoken to literally thousands and thousands yes. of women. 
And the answers that I've got are really, it's a very, very painful thing. It's something that doesn't ever go away. Mm -hmm. It's it, it, it's part of her biography, but in a, in a really, really painful way mm -hmm. um, all across the board. Are we anti-abortion? We have no political stance. I would say we're pro-choice after information. Okay. Let the woman know that there's help available. Let the woman know that she's not alone, that there are, we, we're here to help her. Mm -hmm. And then let her make her decision. Okay. Okay, Nir, I was a little bit nervous to come actually. Um, you dispelled all of that in the last hour and a half. We got to know each other really, really well. I was struck by your dedication to the woman. Why? Like, how was that? And why is that? How did that come to be? It's really, we are trying to make sure that every woman, but every woman. And to talk to them, yeah. Every yeah. woman should know. We are there for you, first and foremost, for the woman. So much stress, so much anguish. We want to make sure she knows, every woman, you, whoever is out yeah. there, you know that if you are in distress, we will be there by your side both emotionally and materially. I wanted to give people a sense of who are the women that walk through the doors here in Efrat. Jamie, it's it's everybody. It's okay. women, you know, from Metula to Elat with all kinds of financial situations, right. right? So it could be the woman that's just been struggling. You know, a woman who finished the army, she's 22 years old, she met somebody, she's struggling and she right. realized, well, now I'm pregnant. How is it going to work out? Or it could be a woman who was actually a very successful woman. She was married to a man who was very, very successful. Yeah. They have already two children. He lost his job. She doesn't have a profession. And all of a sudden, the husband says, well, we can't have another child. Right. You told we me can't we make too, ends meet. Too many details, but you told me they were living in a big house. This one story. And right before she got was expecting that to sell their house and move their kids into a one-bedroom apartment. And she was, like, nervous. Right. She yeah. said, you know, how are we going to have another child? She wanted the child, right. but nobody was there to support her, including her loving husband. Yes. He was loving to her, but he was caring for the other two children. Right. All we needed was to get her through that hump, yes. through that obstacle. And then later on, you know, God willing, she's going to, you know, see and prosper again. But during the most difficult time, we need to be there for her. We love, love miracle stories. You have one. It's made the rounds a bit. But if anyone has not heard it or needs to hear it again, this is a reminder. So we have many yes, miracle correct, stories. Correct, correct. Many yes. miracle stories. Yes. But this story is amazing about a volunteer of ours in Kirat Malachi. She's a pharmacist. One day somebody comes in and is with a prescription for uh, pills to terminate her pregnancy. She says, why? So she says to her, listen, we have three girls today. We just can't have another one. We just can't. So the woman says to her, listen, I'll help you out. You know, I volunteer for a frat. I'll help you whatever you need. Wow. She says, no, it's just not going to happen. Not going to happen. She says, listen, please, let's write a letter to the Lubavitcher Rebbe. They write this letter. She doesn't know what happens. 21 years later, she says, I don't know what happened to her. 21 years later, she's on the line, and you know Israelis like cutting the line. So she was, you know, trying to cut the line, and she says, so what's going on? She says, you know, I have to receive a letter. My son is getting a commendation from the army. He's a hero. So what What did he do, she, she said. So she says to her, listen, he saved the life of a boy who was stabbed in Hebron. She said, oh, wait a second. Wait, I'm, I'm frozen in my spot, and I know the story. Yeah, so she, I, I asked her personally, I said, really, that's what happened? She says to her, I couldn't believe it. I was also frozen in the spot. She said, how long ago did this happen? She said to her, three months ago. She said, that's my son. I can't believe it. She says to her, your son saved the life of my son. Then the woman just was beside herself. She says to her, do you know who my son is? She says, my son who saved your son when he was stabbed, you mm -hmm. gave birth to him. She said, I gave birth to him. I don't have any other children. What are you talking about? She says, don't you remember 21 years ago I came in here? That's my boy. You helped me have the child that ended up saving the life of your child. What a blessing it is to be there when a woman is in need 
and make sure that if she needs your help, you're actually going to help her emotionally or financially, whatever she needs. She'll get over that hump. We know it. The 83,000 women are testimony to 83, that. 83,000 who are raising, who are being raised by their birth mothers. 83,000 children were being raised by their birth mothers. 83,000 women who had babies that they raised to be successful it's adults. It's 83,000 women. That's the first and I primary like that. focus. I love it's 83,000 women who we've helped accomplish their greatest dream to actually have the child they wanted success. to have. And their greatest with, success. With any woman you'll see, no matter what accolades and what success and what her resume may or may not say, her greatest success is her children. I also feel that about my children. Yes. But when I look at my yes. wife, I think it's just amplified. Yes. I do see that there's yes. something special about a woman's relationship yeah. with her child. Oh, I, my kids ask me questions. Why this? How do you know that? Why do you feel that? I said, you don't understand the love of a mother. And that there's nothing I could even express to you or show you or tell you until you're a, you're a mother yourself, I say to my girls, until you're a parent. And that's what that love of a mother. But Jane, Ruthie's crying in the background. I wonder if you're crying at home. I cried for the last hour and a half. I, it's so unbelievable what but he's Jane, doing I just here. want to say about a love of a mother, you know, I think my wife is an amazing, loving wife. Yeah. But when you meet a woman at a front who cries to you and says to you, I want to have this child and there's nobody out there for me. I'm going to have this child just because of our volunteer Liat or yeah. our volunteer Nechama. You're the only one out there in the world that's by my side. I see the love and desire for that child like I've never seen right. before, even in my own home. Right, right. And just so you understand, some of these are 50% of them are married women who the husband just doesn't think they can handle it financially or doesn't want another child. Sometimes they're getting pressure from their parents as well. Uh, who knows what situation they're in. They're maybe in the middle of a degree or school and they try to tell them this is going to, you know, get in the way of your career plans. So, but the point is critical, critical. It's those who want the baby. Absolutely. It's only for those that want the baby. We want to create a world in which they can. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. We're not out there proselytizing. We're not out there um, trying to convert the the non-believers. This is not. I, I don't even know what words to use. So I just want to dispel any preconceived notions about what a fraud is about. There's no, no, no woman that we want to suffer. Right. If she wants to have that baby, we want her to have it with joy. Right. All the rest is politics that we don't get involved. Correct. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, $1,500. That's a, remarkable. It's not even a baby, it's a life. It's generations. It's a imagine, future. Imagine 83,000 children in Israel. Imagine how that's changing the face of Israeli society. Their children and their children's children. One of our supporters told me, imagine if you started this so many years ago, how many of the people in Israel walking around are a result of donors and volunteers yes. that have helped these women have their children. Who knows how many, yeah. but we just want to make sure that there's not one woman walking around with sorrow and pain for making a decision she felt she doesn't have a choice to make. Right. We want to make sure she has that choice. The choice is critical. Absolutely. And that's what we dream of, I think, um, as humans in this world and as women, that we have that choice. Okay. Thank you, Efrat. Thank you, Nir. Thank you, Rutsi. Thank, Thank you. you to you for watching for this long. Thank you, Jamie. And yeah, I hope that you had tremendous strength and inspiration. Whatever you can do. Jamie is inspiring. Yeah. Come on, this definitely. Is, this is what we do as a community. And I just feel like together, we are doing such incredible work. Organization after organization in Israel and outside of Israel. You guys are the best. I love you. Maximot. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.